Hello, Facebook fans and YouTube fans of DX Engineering. It's Friday afternoon, afternoon here in the Eastern Time Zone of the USA. It's time for the weekend special. And uh, the weekend special is a show you never know what you're going to get because sometimes we talk about antennas, sometimes we talk about propagation. And today we have a very special guest. It's John Doerr, K1AR. John is the CQ Worldwide Contest Director. Hello, John. Hey, how are you doing, Tim? Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, John, are you getting excited about the uh, CQ Worldwide? It's coming up soon. Yeah, you know, it's um, <clears throat> it, 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 we have a little period of quiet time, and then all of a sudden the train starts to, uh, you can hear the train coming into the station. And uh, uh, for anybody who's paying attention to propagation right now, we got a, a, a solar flux over 100 and a sunspot number in the low 120s. So uh, that bodes uh, maybe for some excitement this fall. Yeah, that definitely will be different than it was last year. And of course, uh, we're on the upswing of the new cycle. So that is, uh, that is great for activity. Um, John, what's your favorite part about CQ Worldwide? Well, winning. Uh, <laughs> who doesn't like the win? But I, for me, uh, I, I, I've operated uh, pretty much every one of them since I became a ham. And uh, it, it is the, the mother load of, of uh, DX contesting and, and maybe contesting overall. And uh, it's, it's a contest that offers uh, fun and excitement for anybody. It's not a big station contest. And I think that's uh, been the, the appeal to me from the very early days when I did not have a big station. And even now when I, I don't personally have a big station is I can still enjoy and get on and work lots of people and, uh, and, and you know, across the, uh, across the world in the secret world wide. It's just exciting. So how many people do you think take part? How many hams around the world take part in the worldwide contest? Well, you can measure that two ways. Uh, the contest generates uh, three, four or five million QSOs uh, in a weekend. Uh, if you add up all the contacts that are made, um, and that can be represented depending on the mode by uh, 30 to 40,000 different call signs uh, that, that are out there. So just just think about the volume of activity and, and you can see it ultimately in the way the bands fill up and fill up they do. Uh, CW, you'll see them uh, like on 20 meters well above uh, 14,100 uh, all the way down to the bottom and uh, on phone, it's just end to end. Uh, and, and that's just a, a sign of how, how things work. So, yeah, that's uh, it's an amazing number of people that participate. And then you get thousands of logs uh, after the contest to check. Well, that's that's actually a, a pretty amazing statistic in and of itself. Uh, this uh, year on year, we continue to grow. Um, and we're now experiencing uh, numbers in the range of uh, 18,000 logs, uh, if you add up both modes, are submitted uh, each year for the uh, Secure Worldwide. 18,000 logs. And I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll make a comment on this later, but uh, just to, to kind of wet your whistle with uh, uh, the way things are now done online and the ease that, it, that one can submit a log, uh, we are seeing uh, as many as uh, 5,000 of those logs uh, that are coming in, in in the first 24 hours. I mean, it's, wow. it's, it's just incredible. And uh, of all the logs we, we receive, uh, they they 95 percent of them uh, are actually in before the deadline, which is which is only five days. Um, but uh, right at uh, zero Zulu, uh, the the servers light up. Uh, the, the hard drive uh, lights are blinking, and uh, we're just getting logs. It's really cool. That is that is pretty amazing. I know you have a slide deck, so why don't you go ahead and get started on your uh, slide deck and show everybody what you got. Sure. Now, uh, despite your uh, uh, your hope that I have 300 slides here, I, uh, I have something that's maybe a little more uh, manageable for uh, for today. So we'll... Uh, We'll keep this kind of uh, on the briefer side in the uh, in the interest of time, uh, but basically what I wanted to do uh, here uh, today was just kind of give you a, a little bit of a just a general overview on, on some things, and then uh, particularly highlight a couple new things that are happening in this uh, this fall season in 2021 that are uh, uh, pretty darn exciting. 
So that's, uh, that, that's what we're going to uh, get into. For those of you who don't know, we have a very large group of people who work with me to support the ultimate production of the results of the CQ contest. And you can see on the screen here, um, one, of, one of the hallmarks of the, of the Worldwide Committee is its global nature. Uh, this is not just a, a U.S.-based uh, group of people, but uh, we literally have people from uh, all over the world, Australia to Romania to Portugal to you name it, um, as well as uh, uh, good participation and support from the other CQ contest directors uh, in one, on 160 and uh, in the WPX contest and so forth. Um, <clears throat> a little bit on the, uh, the organization. Um, and how this all kind of works. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm the lucky guy that, that where as, as the overused phrase is, where the buck stops, I guess. But, you know, we are blessed to have uh, a number of regional advisors who, who really help us. So if we have a question on a log or, or, an, or something that we want to know, uh, very often I can refer that to one of our regional guys who can speak in native language uh, if it's overseas and, and, and ask questions and, and uh, get better results. But as I mentioned, uh, the process actually, uh, as, as time consuming as it can be, is, is actually quite simple. It's just a matter of uh, the logs come in. Uh, with now uh, uh, uploading logs uh, via the web, uh, the amount of effort that we used to spend in fixing logs that were mailed to us, emailed to us, has kind of gone away uh, to a large extent. And uh, we're getting a, a much higher percentage of logs that are that are formatted correctly right out of the box, uh, and that saved uh, saved us a lot of time. There's still uh, work that needs to be done there, but we're making a lot of progress. Interestingly, the the log checking process, uh, being all computerized and and very mature, uh, we actually have an ability to probably produce uh, a 98 percent accurate. A set of results in about a week, um, and that most of that is just waiting for the logs to come in. Uh, in total, uh, what uh, what takes a lot of the time of the committee is not so much the, the log checking, which is uh, largely automated, but it's uh, what comes out of that, <clears throat> and uh, that's what we call the investigation phase, where we may see a log that um, just requires a little more careful look to ensure that the things like use of packet when or spotting when their a signal op is not happening or, or self spotting, which is against the rules and, and some of these things. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a classic 80-20 rule, although this is more like 99-1. And what I mean by that is 99% uh, of logs are, are uh, just fine as is, and it's the 1% that takes all the time. Um, and then ultimately the, the results are published uh, and that's what you all see when, uh, when they come out. Um, speaking of publishing, uh, these are some of the key dates uh, for uh, this year. And uh, I expect all of you to commit these to memory and uh, uh, make sure that you, uh, you have them all. But it, this is all, of course, available on, on cqww.com. But I thought it'd be useful just to show uh, when the contest is this year. It's always the last full weekend of the month in October and, and uh, November for FONUS CW. Uh, we have uh, for now several years adopted a, a pretty tight a deadline uh, as most contests are doing these days. Uh, there's actually a movement afoot to even want to make it shorter. Um, but nevertheless, uh, five days you have, which, uh, you know, for the vast majority of people is more than enough time to, to uh, upload a log. So a lot of people, including myself, do it right after the contest. Um, but anyway, um, <clears throat> log check is generally done uh, for phone uh, in mid-January and the CW about a month later. And, uh, you know, you may ask the question, why does it take so long to get results published? And uh, the, the reason is quite simply that we have to comply with, uh, with CQ Magazine's publishing schedule. And, oh, by the way, despite what I may think as, a, as a, a very parochial director of my contest, there actually are other operating events and things to report that are, that are due their 15 minutes of fame as well. So it's, it's really just a slotting thing like uh, airplanes at a, a, in the airport on the, uh, on the runway. Uh, and our slot is uh, April and May, and that's what it is. So 
I mentioned before, we're, uh, you know, the vast majority of logs were received on time uh, last year, uh, uh, 1,500 logs. So it's actually in the first eight hours. Uh, so that's, that's really something. And, and something I put in place this year is uh, the fact that we are now requiring uh, worldwide members to kind of set the, the golden standard here and uh, requiring that people who are a member of the committee submit their log in, in 24 hours. Uh, and that's just that's just good behavior and, and good practice. So let's talk uh, a little bit about what's uh, what's new in uh, in this coming year. And I can say uh, summarize it in one word uh, in terms of the, the perhaps the most significant thing, and that is youth. And uh, you know this is on the minds of, of of many hams these days. You know what are we doing to um, <clears throat> encourage youth to be part of ham radio and, and in our case, uh, in contesting in particular. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the goal that uh, we, that I set out for the committee is what can we be doing to encourage more youth participation? We as a CQ worldwide sponsors. And it, the, the, the thing that was obvious to me is that trying to figure out what's in the minds of, of youth operators uh, when uh, the people who are trying to do the figuring are, are you know, two to three times their age, uh, it just seemed to me that what we ought to do is, is get input from people who are actually in that demographic and have them talk to us, which is exactly what we did. So we had the uh, expertise of two folks in general, uh, in particular, uh, Luke and Philip, LUNFAM and DK6SP, and uh, of course the others, and uh, basically had some very good dialogue and learned a lot in terms of really what, uh, what motivates um, the younger generation to want to play in this thing called contesting. And uh, I'll share a couple of these things with you. This, is, this was new information to me. In some cases, it kind of affirmed what I already believed. But nevertheless, uh, there is, uh, continues to be, uh, and maybe this was surprising, uh, the, the youth uh, contingent, if you will, loves to see their call sign in print. Um, and I thought maybe those days were kind of past us, but uh, they really do like to see see their call sign and the results of whatever they do in print and, and you know, show their friends and show uh, whoever. Um, <clears throat> and that's an important thing to, to keep in mind. Um, the other thing is they, they really expressed a, a strong desire to want to be taken seriously and to be recognized by the, the older generation, that we're not just uh, giving them lip service, we're not just uh, have a, a patronizing attitude about the youth, but we really truly care about what, they, what they're doing and we want to understand and get inside their, their heads to respond to the things that motivate them and make them want to participate and join, join us older guys. <clears throat> so with, with that in mind, uh, what we decided to do uh, this year, and this is really the new piece, is that we've created a youth overlay. Um, and that's a, that's kind of CQ Worldwide talk. But basically, you can think of it as kind of a category. And we already have these in a Worldwide today. We have one for uh, the classic uh, uh, overlay, the, the, the guys that operate and, and gals that operate 24 hours uh, as, a, as a separate uh, categorization for them. Uh, and then we also have a rookie uh, overlay. Now, some people said, well, if you have a rookie overlay, why do you need a youth one? And the answer is obviously because not all rookies are young. Uh, there actually are new hams that are, that are, you know, 50, 60, 70 years old. And uh, it, by just simply limiting it to rookies, we were actually not accomplishing what we wanted to do, which was to highlight the youth. So this is going to be in place this year. And uh, one of the questions I had for the, for the guys was, well, how do you define youth? I mean, you know, at, at my age now, everybody's younger than me, it seems. Um, so we we concluded that that uh, youth in this context is 25 years old or younger. So 25 is the magic number. Uh, when I presented this recently, somebody asked if uh, if I still qualify, and I said, "No, nah, that that train left the station about 40 years ago." So for me, but. Um, What's interesting is that uh, Philip in particular, DK6SP, said there are literally uh, tens of thousands of youth operators across uh, some of the IARU regions, which is kind of how they measure it. And he indicated that there was no doubt in his mind that we could literally attract 
a hundred, uh, hundreds, hundreds of incremental submissions into the Secure Worldwide and people playing the game if we did some just some simple things to recognize their existence. And that's really what this is all about. Uh, the other thing that came up and, you know, who uh, who doesn't like to see their call in print? So what we're going to be doing now, just like we do for the rookie and the um, uh, and the classic uh, overlays, is that we're going to have a separate section in the line scores and the results that will be just for the youth. And they can really see peer to peer how they do uh, in against each other. And uh, when you start to get the numbers into the hundreds or more, that's going to be a very interesting uh, a collection of uh, competitions uh, within the competition. And that's just going to be an exciting time. Um, the, the, the other thing we're going to be doing uh, that I'll be doing in the write-up uh, this year is I'm going to explicitly include one or maybe two little sidebar articles and pictures of, uh, of, of a youth or uh, youth operation, either a single op or, or some kind of story. And I've been doing some of this anyway, because I think a lot of people are, are tiring from contest results that just say, you know, so-and-so won and so-and-so won this and so-and-so won that, but to really hear the story behind the story. And uh, I, I mentioned that uh, we would do this for youth and uh, Philip and, and Luke both got very excited about that. And that's not necessarily an article about who won the youth category. It, it's more about, do they have an interesting story to tell and uh, that, that the general uh, readership would want to see. And that's, uh, that's really going to be the focus. So it was interesting. Uh, uh, Philip DK6SP said that one of the highlights of, of his whole ham radio contest experience was the year that he won a rookie plaque. And uh, he says he just cherishes that as one of his uh, crowning uh, achievements in his young uh, contesting career. And uh, I think the, 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 the combination of bottling that uh, excitement uh, and really turning on a marketing machine, which, uh, which the guys are going to be doing, uh, into largely through the IARU uh, uh, Yoda uh, YOTA uh, organizations, uh, to really create awareness that we're, we're really leaning into this now for the first time with some substance. And uh, perhaps the, uh, the best way to describe the substance uh, beyond what I've already said is that we're going to and have now implemented a uh, very substantial awards uh, program uh, with uh, the addition of plaques. And um, we now have created uh, 14, one four new CQ Worldwide plaques uh, seven for phone and seven for CW. This is just a snippet off the, uh, the CQ Worldwide uh, website. Uh, and you can see there's more youth plaques in the overlay uh, area than anything else. Uh, and we're going to have 14 of these and uh, one uh, for each region around the world and then a world winner. And I can assure you, based on the input that we've received, that the winners of these plaques are going to be very, very happy campers. And that's going to create uh, enthusiasm and in infectious uh, participation both this year and hopefully uh, for, for years to come. Uh, speaking of plaques, um, the, uh, if anyone is, is interested in what we're currently doing in the, the awards program overall, uh, again, you can go to um, cqww.com and uh, take a look at what categories are being uh, promoted right now and, and available. Uh, we have over 170 plaques. It is, uh, it is a very large program, and as someone who's personally involved in trying to keep pace with this thing, it's, uh, it's, it's a big chore, but one that uh, makes a lot of people around the world, including some big names in contesting, uh, very proud and very excited. And uh, if you're interested in sponsoring something or have an idea for a new one that might make sense, uh, I'd love to, uh, to hear from you. But even uh, knowing that, that uh, of the 18,000 people that submit a log and only 170 of them are going to win a plaque uh, for the other 17,830 uh, participants who submit a log on time, uh, we now allow for a online, uh, excuse me, on time uh, certificate that you can download and print out and, um, and put on your wall. And it's a, it's a very handsome certificate and I get requests all the time uh, or comments all the time for people that, that are thankful for being to have it. a lot of them call it their diploma uh, in the CQ Worldwide, which is kind of a, a fun way to uh, describe it. 
So we're pretty happy with all, all how all this is evolving, and uh, I would encourage you just to pay attention to uh, the various communication mechanisms like this and others for updates and as things uh, come along. Uh, the next thing I'll just touch on briefly um, is this idea we've created. This is an actual category that we've created this year for the CQ Worldwide. We're calling it the Explorer category. Some of you have been around for a while may remember a decade or so ago, we created uh, an, a category called the extreme category. And this is, uh, you know, kind of like extreme car racing or, you know, however you want to describe it. But the, the idea is to kind of loosen up the rules, um, uh, the restrictions that, that exist for traditional uh, competitive uh, contesting and really allow for technology to take the forefront in how you go about uh, running a contest and uh, and creating a category just for that. So these folks won't be competing against what I would call the, uh, the traditional roadsters, but they will be competing amongst themselves. It may not be a large group initially, but uh, the extreme category 10 years ago is probably ahead of its time. But now I think with uh, all the advancement that's been made with uh, remote operating and and really exploiting uh, the ability to do things uh, with, with the internet and technology, it's gonna be very interesting and, and I guess exciting to kind of see what people come up with uh, to basically exploit technology and to operate the contest in that mode. And, there, and this is gonna be open to, uh, to single ops and, and multi ops. Uh, the, uh, the scores won't be uh, allowed to be part of a club competition or any of those sorts of things. So it's really, in some ways, kind of an island of, it, of itself. But uh, I'm going to be uh, having fun, I think, this year uh, in the write-up, uh, describing some of the crazy and wacky things that I'm sure people are already thinking about in how to uh, use technology in, in new ways that maybe they weren't allowed to by their traditional rules to uh, compete and, uh, and, and generate uh, uh, results in the CQ Worldwide. So I, I encourage you, if you have any interest in this at all, to uh, simply go to uh, cqww.com slash explorer, and the full set of rules are, are there. Um, speaking of rules, by the way, I'm, I, this is one of the things I'm really proud of with, with the Worldwide is that every year I go through a process where we have all the rules translated, and we now are, are have uh, published 18 languages. Uh, some of them are, are relatively obscure but important, and everything from uh, Chinese, Japanese, uh, Romanian, um, uh, just uh, all over the world, really, uh, a full set of rules, and also uh, for the Explorer category as well. And I have a, a team of folks who apologize to me if they take more than two or three days to do the work. So. <laughs> There's a lot of enthusiasm and, and I think a lot of national spirit when people say, wow, you've, you've, you've decided my language is important enough that you want to translate it into my native language so that my countrymen can understand fully how to operate this contest correctly and go to the website and, and see it there in, uh, you know, in front of them. So uh, exciting time indeed. And then finally, um, <clears throat> we have a few uh, what I would uh, call uh, rules for the top competitors. And I've highlighted one in, uh, in particular for this year in, in some of my recent communications. And that is we've, we've had uh, now for a while a rule that basically requires that you record both transmitted and received audio. Uh, if you are in fact a top three finisher in the world, in the continent or, or in the USA level. And a lot of people say, well, I don't know if I'm going to be that or not. Well, my answer is, well, then record to be sure. And I can tell you that uh, of all the people that qualify in, in, in those particular buckets, of which there are hundreds, obviously, we're not going to be requesting every one of them to send us our, their recording because the, the task of doing that would be monumental for everybody. So this is kind of a, a mechanism we have in the rules so that if we do have concern about a log or if, if somebody has um, <coughs> either intentionally or inadvertently uh, broken the rules, that we have a way of, uh, of, of reviewing a recording that complements uh, the work we can do with SDR recordings and other, other log checking uh, tools that we have at our disposal to really accomplish, uh, which is the number one goal in, in all of this, and that is not to 
be punitive about the, the, the process of lock checking, but to simply publish the results as accurately as they can for what really happened. And that's, uh, that's really our goal. So, so that's in place. And then we, for a long time now, have also uh, required that competitive logs uh, in the same kinds of groups, at the very least, include the actual frequencies that they use. We can figure that out on our own with recordings and all that, but it makes life so much easier if you just uh, use what the, the tools that 99% of us have and, and include that information in, in your log. And you'd be surprised, even not in the top competitors, but even amongst them, uh, what that sometimes reveals is, uh, uh, is people who are assisted, for example, who maybe get a little lazy, a little sloppy, or a little sleepy, and uh, you'll see QSOs in, uh, in places out of the band and, uh, or too close to a band edge, and it just reveals itself uh, uh, almost uh, self-revealing when you look at logs, and it's just one of the tools that we use when we, when we check. So there's lots of ways you can ask questions that go beyond the, 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 the short uh, update I've done here. Um, the, uh, you know, the best one is uh, to send things to questions at uh, cqoy.com. That goes directly to me. And believe it or not, uh, I actually respond to every one of these. Uh, at the end of the um, uh, worldwide contest, uh, the first week or so, it's, uh, it's an email frenzy. Uh, and I will literally get two to 300 emails and 90% of them are, are just simple questions that could be answered. Uh, we get a, a few that are more difficult to work through, but every one of them gets answered. Uh, we have a presence, uh, obviously in the web and Facebook, and uh, we also have a Twitter account. So there's lots and lots of ways to, to reach us. And, uh, if you have questions at any time, not just after the contest, uh, but even maybe even before the contest where you got a question like, gee, according to the rule, can I do this? Uh, that's the kind of stuff that we love to answer and to hopefully uh, circumvent any problems after the fact. So uh, don't be shy. Uh, I'm happy to hear from, from all of you. So a big thank you to the contest community for one simple thing. and That's uh, playing in my sandbox, playing in our sandbox. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to carry this uh, fancy title of CQ Worldwide Contest Director. Hopefully you guys know me well enough, most of you, that I don't take myself too seriously. But I do take the contest seriously and I take the work that we do seriously. And I want to make sure that we can serve the contest community in, in the best way we can with the tools we have to give you the results you deserve. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Tim. All right, John. Uh, great presentation. Thanks very much for doing that. Uh, in the uh, chat room, we've got Kilo Juliet 7, Juliet X Ray Mike, and also uh, Andy 2 Echo 0, Radio Echo Echo is here, and Oscar Zulu 1, Delta Whiskey X Ray, and uh, Mike 0, Delta X Ray Radio, Mark Kane. Uh -huh. so, uh, good afternoon, uh, Tim and John. Wow, you certainly get high pro profile gentlemen on your broadcast, Tim. I've had the pleasure of operating with John at K3LR. I learned a lot, especially how to speak proper English. <laughs> um, that was a that was a fun time, you know. Uh, uh, Mark, of course, is a good friend of mine. And Mark, I, I apologize. Uh, Mark is a new member of the of the Worldwide Committee, and uh, I, I used an old slide, so you're you're you're, you're still uh, you're still going to be put to work, Mark. So don't think you're off the hook because you didn't show up on the slide. But uh, we spent the weekend. Uh, just these are the kinds of things that never make the box score in contesting and why we love it so much. But I spent the weekend asking him to, can you speak British to me? And he would, he would use these words and I would just say, well, I have no idea. I've never heard that word. What does that mean? Right. I mean, we both speak English, right? And of course he would say the same to me and I'd give him a couple American things and he would shake his head and uh, we concluded that it was still okay. Now that's great. And uh, Mark is a super operator. So, Nice to have you on, Mark, and thanks for being part of the Worldwide Committee. Also, Muhammad, 9 Kilo 2 Golf Tango is on, and he says, good luck to everyone in the CQ Worldwide. And uh, Whiskey Juliet 3 United, and also uh, it's Carlos, and he's uh, Tango India 200 India. It's a celebration of the 200-year Costa Rica independence. And uh, let's see here. We've got... Uh, Kilo Mike 6 Sierra Oscar X-Ray is on, 
and uh, Young Grace, Kilo Echo 8, Radio Juliet United is on. And uh, Eric, November, Mike 5, Mike says, uh, great leadership has made the CQ Worldwide Contest the world's favorite. And we've got Whiskey Alpha 4, Mike, Oscar, Mike on. And uh, Delta Kilo 5, Oscar, Norway, Victor, Gunter, and Wiesbaden. And we've got, uh, let's see, Whiskey 3, Mike, Lima, Juliet, Young Michael, is on from near Pittsburgh. Alpha Bravo 7 Radio Radio. <laughs> Thanks for all your hard work, guys. And uh, there's uh, Dan Trainer. Hello, John, former University of Lowell. Oh, and, uh, my goodness. So uh, our friend Mike Mowry, Kilo Echo 3, Juliet Papa. Echo India 3, India Echo Bravo is on from Ireland. And W3MLJ says, love the new youth category. And uh, from New Zealand, it's Kevin, Zulu Lima 1, Mike Hotel, Sierra. And uh, good morning to you, Kevin. Oscar Norway 4, Bravo Delta Victor is on from Belgium. And Victor Uniform 2, India Bravo from New oh Delhi, my. India. It's the middle my, Hello, Karan. Nice to see you. Wow. <laughs> you know, I, if, if I could just briefly interrupt him, this, this is just a, it's, it's largely a testament to DX and, and DX engineering's reach, of course, but it also to some degree is a statement about the worldwide, right? I mean, we're, we're talking about a worldwide, uh, you know, operating event and the, even the people that are participating today are from India and Kuwait and Costa Rica and New Zealand and Germany and England and all these places, right? Are just here live with us now. Right. Right. And uh, greetings from the coast of the Carolinas. November Juliet for Zulu. Kilo Kilo 6 India Papa Radio from California. And here's Philip, Delta Kilo 6 hey. Zero Papa, who is uh, on the uh, CQ Worldwide Committee. And uh, see, John says, going to run classic this year. No more rookie status. Have to run with the big guns. And uh, <laughs> Whiskey X-Ray 8 Tango. Rick is checking in. And uh, Michael says, it's great when running. I love working youth. Uh, it's hard to find others very active on HF, so I'm very happy to see how this goes to get more youth into contesting. And Michael has sat in your 20-meter chair, John. Uh, he, he was here for Kilo 2 Mike and uh, did a great job on 20 meters. You still have <laughs> right. a job, but Michael is, is nipping right there. <laughs> Whiskey Juliet 3 United says needs to get working, uh, get going working on my CW skills. Would like to enter one of the CW contests. Dino, thanks for the update, John, from Kilo Lima Zero Sierra. And uh, let's see, we've got Steve, November Alpha 5 Charlie. These are the same great ideas, or these are some great ideas, John, while listening. How about shortwave listener entry category maybe it would <laughs> encourage new licensing interest and participation and uh see uh rob uh, mike zero kilo papa delta says greetings from england would there be a slim chance of a mobile category i've operated the wpx and ssb for seven years from my mobile you know, I uh, uh, that I've heard the several of these ideas before, and the the, the only challenge we have uh, is, of course, category inflation. And you know, I, I, as, as much as I'd like to do some of these things, and maybe someday we will. So you know, I I don't want to shut any of this down, but in any means, but but I can tell you that uh there is probably as many ideas uh for categories as sometimes as uh, as you know as some pro significant percentage of the people who participate because you know there there are some good ideas on how to slice and dice and create little mini competitions within the competition which i like uh so it's, it's a balance between you know having too much of that and and really capitalizing on what could be an opportunity so we think about that all the time Youth was the, was the favorite one this year. And uh, all, all great comments there, John. Um, Mark, November 4, Bravo, Charlie Delta, who is the Huntsville Hamfest chairman, said contest season looms. And now that the Hamfest is over, it's time to go up to the, the tower, fix the rotor uh, that's stuck south. And uh, Randy is on from Columbus, Georgia. It's Whiskey X-Ray 4, Radio Delta Mike. And... Uh, oh, 
one of my favorite guys uh, is just checked in here. It's Gerard. Victor Kilo for Fox Alpha Bravo. Uh, one of our two by four friends. And uh, great. great. Just hopefully uh, we'll see lots of activity from Australia and the CQ worldwide. Uh, more DX uh, AR 7 X ray 2 Radio Fox and uh, is uh, is checked in. Nice to have 7 X 2 RF on and hope that you get in the CQ worldwide. And our friend Ray Higgins, Whiskey 2 Radio Echo. Uh, I, I'm late, but hello. And Ray, thanks for all you're doing to uh, promote uh, remote operating and also youth. And uh, our friend Al, November 8 Golf Uniform Yankee. Uh, Al is a, a local ham that just got started and his eyes are this big about uh, working DX. So he, he's, uh, he's having a great time. And Hal, Whiskey 8 Hotel Charlie. Hal was uh, my guest yesterday on the Manufacturer's Show. Whiskey 2 Quebec United is on from the Carolina shore. And uh, let's see here. Randy says, I broke my left heel trying to get my HF tower up by myself. Don't recommend it. Um, Rob says, how about a medium power category, maximum of 500 <laughs> watts? <laughs> Ever hopeful. There, there's the Rob's mobile setup. Uh, we, it looks like a spaceship in there. Uh, and uh, we wow, look at that. We talked to Rob during the week on 40 meters. And uh, Gunter says, very nice presentation. Thanks for your great work, gentlemen. So, John, you know, it, it, uh, this was a very fast 36 minutes. It's been, uh, it's been great. And, uh, and if you do have questions, you just go to the CQ Worldwide website and uh, you can see where to uh, contact John or any of the uh, committee members. And uh, thanks for all you do, John. And uh, it's just, I know it's a, a boatload of work, but man, that CQ Worldwide contest is really good. Yeah, you, you, by the way, you just reminded me the, the, the actual mechanism to send questions in now is through the, the web form. I, I actually misspoke um, as opposed to an email. Uh, but that's again right on uh, cqww.com. And I would also like to say for the for the 7x2 uh, RF and the VU, and um, let's see, well, there was a, a 9k2. Uh, I would advise you to uh, consider operating around 14151 uh, in the uh, in the upcoming phone CQ worldwide because uh, there'll be a friendly face who will be happy to say hello to you. <laughs> All right, thanks again, John, for coming on, and we hope to hear everybody in the CQ worldwide contest. But you don't have to wait to have fun until then. You can get on the air right now. Have some fun with the greatest hobby in the world. 73 from DX Engineering. 73, guys. Good to see you all.